Welcome back to M Hood Fishing. It is just after 9 a.m. So this is the Sabine River, just outside of Mineola, Texas. I was here yesterday. Today I'm going to fish it for catfish. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna use sinker slides with homemade lead that were sent to me by a subscriber. Down here we've got a, a bumper, a knot bumper. Main line is going to be mono today and that's 30 pound. The leader is also 30 pound. We're going to fish this like winter. We're gonna use a winter method because we've had winter temps overnight for several days and it is cold right now, but it's gonna get up to 60 degrees, maybe. It is still in the 30s. We're gonna use small baits. It's a good method for winter for catfish. A lot of catfish don't like big baits around winter and I'm gonna treat this like a winter day. My winter method for catfish isn't just about small baits it's also about moving around we're gonna place these baits out and check it out wait 30 minutes if that doesn't produce anything i'll replace them in a different spot here i mean in a different area and if that doesn't work we'll move to a whole different spot along here there are a few spots we're just going to see how it goes now we're going to fish out in here and towards that tree over there but I've been told that if I cast way too close to that timber over there, it is a guaranteed snag. Helicopter time. That said, I'm a little, you know, I wish it wasn't a guaranteed snag because that timber should have a bowl around it. There should be cats in it. So we're going to try and get as close as we can without losing stuff because that should be holding catfish. We'll put one close to over there, but not so close. And then we'll have another one over here. Let's get you on the tripod and you can watch me do that. So the bait this morning is cut bluegill. Around these parts, people like to call that cut perch. Just so you know. All right, let's get these lines out. First one, I'm gonna put to my right towards the bank, towards the far bank. Like I said before, this next rod is gonna go towards that tree, but hopefully I don't throw it right into the snags. People tell me that this year around this, this area has been bad for turtles, and there's turtles here. We might get us a, a cold morning turtle before the end of the session. All right, hopefully that doesn't be a guaranteed snag. This spot is just not producing anything. I've had a few bites, kind of like turtle bites, like the turtles pawing at it or gar, maybe small fish. I've been here for almost an hour, it's almost 10. I'm gonna be out here fishing till noon, so I'm running out of time. And these catfish, you know, they might not feed all day because it's not that great of a day. So it's time to change spots. I can't make up my mind where I want to go. Somewhere right in here, but there is a lot of wood. Wish I was in a kayak already. I hope you're ready for my crazy adventurous side because it's coming out right now. This spot that I've chose looks like an absolute snag fest there's a lot of wood there's some current coming through here so we might we might be losing some stuff but there might be some fish hiding in here catfish you know right in here waiting for stuff to come their way there's a lot a lot of places for them to hide here so what we're going to do is we're going to observe this water it's dark and dirty but i can see things as i observe it so I'm looking for areas where I can see structure and I don't want to cast right on top of that. So I see it right in front of me. I know what to do when I'm retrieving my bait. What we're going to do is we're going to put one over here to the left. I'm going to like kind of drag it just a little bit, see if I feel something feels okay there. 
Nice thing about this spot is I'm in the sunshine, so I'm warming up. That's good. See this timber sticking up right across there? I'm not sure if you can. We're going to put this next bait out towards it, but not like on top of it. Oh. All right, now I'm going to give this about 20, 30 minutes and move further down. Further down this bank, it gets kind of steep. But yeah, I think I'm in a better place. It's a little wider here. My, it's not deeper so much here, but there's a lot of good features to hide fish. As we get this way, we might get into deeper water as we go upstream here. All right, here's a better look at area that I'm fishing. As you can see, lots of deadfall here. And I want to let you know, there's more and more like this as you go down river. There's a lot of it. It's pretty cool looking. All right, it's time to change spots now. So this spot is not far. It's just upstream. It's a bit of a bend. Probably should have came here first off, but I kind of liked the way that looked down there. Wanted to give it a go. I don't expect much from this morning because I am fishing conditions that are pretty much just like winter. But it may be just a hair a little better. We're going to place that over there. This is a much tighter spot. That's why you're on the chesty. So we're going to put this straight out towards... The bush right there, or the tree really. Oh, this is much deeper too. This is probably a hole. As you can see, right in front of us is a bend. And this is the outside of the bend, of the curve. Normally the inside, the tighter bit of the bend is going to be where the current digs out so it should be deeper over that way. So we have this bait in that direction and then this one out in the middle of the bend. Since I'm running out of time, I'm going to limit the amount of time that these baits are in their placements and move them around, probably about every 10, 15 minutes. See if I can produce something. We're kind of coming out of the morning feeding cycle, but as it warms up, they might get active. We just have to put a bait where the fish is hanging out and try to draw him out of his hidey hole. Oh, look at that. All right, so I just changed these baits. I changed this one here just a little bit, and then I took this one out of the center and put it this way. Now, I should, at this position, I should be at the end of the hole where it kind of comes up. When you're fishing for cats under winter conditions in a hole like this, you're not going to find cats always in the middle of it or the deepest part of it. They're either going to be... And here we go. What do we got? Oh, it came... Damn it. Yeah, they're going to be hanging out either at the beginning or at the end of it. There might be some in the deepest part, but usually they're going to hang out the begin or the end the beginning or the end, because that's where they're going to ambush bait at. All right, so we're gonna put this back out there. I wonder what that was. There are a lot of gar out in this water. All kinds of gar too. Finally, got a hook, got a hook set. What do we got here? Little channel. Nope, nope. Take that back. Get the sun out of my eyes. Little blue cat. Nice. Get the skunk off. Yay, first fish of the morning. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Little blue cat. Go back. So now we know what's up with all those little bites. This spot is holding a lot of small catfish. Hopefully they're all blue cats. Maybe there's a bigger one here. I'm definitely uh, happy I caught a fish, so. Ooh, and I'm getting another bite. I better get you back on my chest. But I will definitely come back to this spot. It's pretty peaceful, pretty chill. Under better conditions, I bet it's better fishing. 
getting a little action here. Reel up this slack. It's probably another small cat, I hope. Get that bait in your mouth. I would drop down to a, a smaller hook, but I didn't bring smaller hooks. Three is the smallest I brought. I got four aughts and three aughts. Getting a pretty good bite here. He's keeping a tight line and hanging on it. Since it's a small cat, what I'm gonna do is give it a half reel, see if I can set the hook on him. Are you there? He's still got my bait. Yeah, we got him. Oh, this is a little better than the last one. He's running. Is this even a cat? What do we got here? Oh, yes. Gonna need the net for this one. Whoa, he's running pretty good. What do we got here? Look at that. Getting down to this bank is kind of sketchy. That's why we're taking our time. I think I'm gonna try to get him from this position. What do we got? Well, he's giving us a nice fight. He's got, a, oh, it's an op, right? Oh, let me get him up in here. Oh no. What? Oh, no, this is some. This is a new species for me, I think. Let's get him up here. He's really, really, really pale. So let me see what we got here. We might have a nice bowfin. For a second, I thought I had a bow, oh, not a bowfin, uh, I thought I had a snakehead. He's so pale. But this is a, I believe this is a bowfin. I've just never caught one this pale. Back in Louisiana and Mississippi where I've caught these, they always come out much darker. But if he stays out of the water for a good while, he is going to be darkening up from experience here. 5.56. Wow. Wow. That is the palest bowfin I've ever caught. I'm pretty sure that's a bowfin. Let me know down in the comments. Yeah, you're right. It's the palest bowfin I've ever caught. If I'm wrong and this is a snakehead, I'm about to do something bad. I'm gonna let him go. Of course, I think this is the biggest one I've ever caught. My first in this state anyway. I'm well pleased. I didn't expect this this morning. So let's let him go. I'm not even sure if there's snakeheads in Texas, but I've been gone for so long. There he goes, he's kicking off. That's a bowfin. That is the palest bowfin I've ever seen. Yeah, it's been so long since I've been here. Anything's possible. I know that I've heard stories of crazy things. So that does it for me. It's 10 to 12, I gotta be somewhere. Over the last two days, all the fish that I've caught out of this river have been coming out so pale that it's been throwing me. I apologize for that. I will get used to these very pale fish very soon. But that that one threw me for a loop. I was like, wow, I'm so used to, because uh, of where I've been fishing over the last several years, I'm so used to darker fish. They come out really dark. Like alligator gar have these black backs sometimes down in Southeast Louisiana and Mississippi. And so do the bowfin. I, I, I didn't know what that was for a second. I think it was a bowfin. I know I'm sounding like an idiot, but I'm pretty sure that was just the palest bowfin I've ever seen in my life. All right, so two fish is better than none under these conditions. Woo! Like, share, comment. Don't drag me too bad. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.